Hi guys, hope you're all well and thanks for tuning in. So here it is, the new force feedback update has arrived and I've got to say I'm very impressed. In fact I think this update is a game changer for all wheel users and I'm convinced the gap between wheel and controller lap times has just got smaller. Great news. As always though, the settings need to be right. I've had my head in the game since the update dropped a couple of days back, trying to get the most realistic settings I can and I believe I'm there. Before I go into what figures I'm actually using, it's important we get a good understanding of what each of the settings control. There have been some changes, so let's go through them. The best source of info to gain some understanding comes directly from Turn 10. There's a link in the description, so give it a click and follow along. Okay, so clicking the link takes you to the wheel setup and tuning page from Forza Support, and I absolutely recommend you have a good read through this. I probably read through this like four or five times before I even turned the game on to have a, um, a try and see how the changes had sort of been implemented. Um, the ones I'm going to point out while I've got the page open, aligning torque scale, mechanical trail scale, pneumatic trail scale, these three are a real balance and act to get those right. Um, as it clearly states here, the aligning torque scale is its basically like a master volume for the mechanical trail and the pneumatic trail. So the mechanic trail, have a read through, see what it does. Uh, pneumatic trail, again, have a read through. When you've got these two right, the aligning torque will um, basically control the, the amplitude of these two together rather than controlling them in independently. Uh, the road feel scale, not feed, but feel scale is another new addition, which is really nice actually. It gives you a, a good feel for like the little bumps and grooves in the road and curbs and stuff like that without actually affecting uh, the aligning torque. So really, really nice additions there. Back to some more familiarities underneath, center spring scale, wheel damper scale, and blah, 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 blah. Um, so there you go, have a good look through, get yourselves educated, and uh, yeah, let's crack on with the settings. Okay, so here we are back in the Forza game, um, and I'm not going to sort of make this too long-winded. Uh, everyone's keen to get their wheels set up nice and quick, and we are going to just move straight into the settings. And I'll go through them sort of descriptively as I'm pointing out. Uh, what settings I've used, but here we go into options down to controller and then hit X for your advanced uh, settings and here they all are so starting from the top steering axis dead zone uh, inside and outside 0 100 nice and simple if you don't know what dead zones do um, then your inside dead zone is basically uh, the more steering you'll need to to do physically with your wheel before the game will actually actually register the input and then outside dead zones is um, like how far you've got to steer before the game registers a hundred percent steering we don't want these to affect the sensitivity of the steering. This needs to be nice and accurate. Um, and so for that reason, uh, we're at 0 and 100. Nice, nice and simple. Acceleration, um, I'm not sure why I've got that on 15. We're going to knock that down to 5. Um, I'd like there to be a little bit of movement on the pedal before the game registers, but only a tiny bit, just sort of a little bit of, almost like a bit of play in the pedal like you'd expect in a real car. And the accelerator pedal's not that difficult to press all the way down, so we can go all the way to 100 with ease. So there we go. Um, if you do find when you're accelerating that you're pressing the accelerator pedal and the game's not registering that you're getting 100% pressure, uh, that sometimes happens if your pedal gets a little bit dusty and dirty inside. Uh, I've recently given my pedals a, a pretty good clean out. Uh, a bit of a laborious job taking them apart, but there we go, I digress. Um, if you do get that, knocking this down will mean you won't have to press the pedal far, as far down to reach 100% on the pressure, um, like in-game. So, yeah, any issues with that, like dirty contacts in the pedals, just knock this down a little bit and you'll find that you're hitting 100%, no problem. And with the brake dead zone, inside and outside, I've got exactly the same settings as I used before the update. 18 and 88, they're my magical numbers. Um, 18 is a little bit high for the inside dead zone on the brake, but I am using the rubber stop. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. I think it's great. Um, but I don't like the brake to be registering any 
input until my foot reaches or the pedal movement reaches the initial contact of that rubber stop, which is why the inside dead zone, I've got it where it is. Now, those rubber stops are going to be pretty much the same for every person using a Logitech G920 setup. So you could probably all go for 18 and 88, make the adjustments if you're not quite happy with it. But there we go. That's where, that's where I've got those. And for the clutch, uh, 15 and 70 is where I've got those set. Uh, 15 on the inside, just so you have to press the pedal down a little bit further before, the regis before it registers. And the outside dead zone at 70. The reason I've got that so low is, uh, is basically just to almost sort of mimic a nice placement for where your biting point would be. And that's, it's, just, it's just as simple as that. Uh, moving on, handbrake inside and outside dead zones. Handbrake's on a button. So, well, it is for me. Um, so, there you go, zero and 100, nice and simple. And we're on to the interesting bits. So, um, let's scroll this down so we've got all the new stuff in view and then bring this back up. Right, vibration scale. I don't like the wheel vibrating um, for any reason other than the feedback that it should be receiving. There's no reason for me why it should vibrate. The vibrations happen when you sort of make contact with barriers and other cars like that um, or if you're overworking the tires the wheel will start to vibrate it's just to give the user a better indication of you know when you're sort of kind of on the peak of traction but I would rather feel that through the mechanical and particularly the pneumatic trail scale so I leave the vibration off now the force feedback scale this looks really low and I was shocked at how low I got it uh, in fact, to do this um, sort of, or the way, the method in which I use to get that, um, I got um, I got the feedback pretty low because I was getting a lot of wheel wobble. You know, I mean, again, this is G920 people, but if you, you know when you're driving in a straight line, the wheel just wobbles around all over the place. It like, vibrates. Uh, really frustrating. So in order to eliminate that as much as possible, the force feedback had to be dropped right down. Now, if you made no other changes and left everything where it was, but just dropped the force feedback scale down, it would feel really weak and horrible, and it did at this point. Um, but it doesn't matter because we've got these next three, the balancing act, aligning torque, which is like, Remember, I said before, like the master volume for the mechanical trail and pneumatic trail uh, adjustments. So, in order to bring some feeling back from the wheel or into the wheel after turning the feedback right, uh, feedback scale right down, the aligning torque got cranked right up to max and instantly brought um, a load more feeling back into the wheel. It was fantastic. So, lower on the force feedback and higher on the aligning torque. Definitely the way to go forward gives a much more sort of natural feel to your setup. Now then, after that, pneumatic trail scale. This one's really, really important as well. This is how you feel um, sort of resistance to turning the wheel, all coming from your tires, tire deformation, stuff like that. Really, really, really good adjustment. I did have this cranked up to 200, but um, after trying it with a variety of cars rather than just like one or two, uh, it was just a little bit too stiff on, on a few of them. So pneumatic scale came down to 170. Um, and the mechanical trail scale, this is like a really good way of helping to identify understeer, loss of grip, that sort of thing. Granted, the pneumatic trail scale will do the same thing, but the I like the the tire. What what you're feeling, if you like, from the tires needs to be quite high. You need as much information from those tires as possible without it, you know, becoming a complete body workout. Um, and the mechanical trail one, like I said, turn that right down. It just if if you turn them, if you turn this right up, it smooths the forces out on the wheel. But as it clearly says there, with less fidelity, like less accuracy, less um, accurate recreation for those who aren't fully understanding what fidelity means. But it's just not, it's not a perfect, it's less perfect if you like. Um, so I didn't want to go too high on the mechanical trail. I wanted to keep things nice and, um, yeah, nice and believable uh, with what I, with the sort of sensations I was feeling. Uh, so I kept that really low, um, but slowly had to start turning that up. By having that down a lot, the mechanical trail set really low, 
you'll find that the feeling or the feedback that you get from the, the pneumatic trail scale is like kind of very on or off. Uh, it's sort of, as, as Turn 10 suggests, it's a very peaky um, adjustment. So it's like there's very little feedback, then there's loads of feedback. And you just want to try and smooth it out. So by, by turning the mechanical trail scale up, you start to smooth out the forces that you're feeling from the tyres. Really, really nice. Um, gives a much more realistic feel um, with a balance inside of things, you know. Um, but as you're coming up and you crank that mechanical trail scale up, it just does, it sort of smooths things over a little bit too much. So we've got the aligning torque set, set right up high to 200. The pneumatic trail is down at 170, and then the mechanical to kind of balance those um, those feedback uh, sensations uh, at 75. Now the road field scale, if we move on to that, I just crank this up to max because everyone's just saying, oh yeah, crank it up, it, it feels really good. It does feel really good, but where you have your road field scale and your pneumatic and mechanical and everything else and your force feedback, they're all going to be relative to each other. So while these settings are where I've settled, you know, settled on, the, um, the, there's, a, there's every possibility that you can re recreate a very similar kind of, kind of feeling, but with different, you know, with different figures. Um, yeah, they're all relative to each other. So for me, with that cranked up to 200, way too, way too much. Um, but cranking it, you know, started dropping it off five at a time until I got down to 170. That felt about right. I did keep going lower, um, but uh, even as low as 150 or 140, it's just not enough. 170 felt really good. Wheel damper scale. Uh, now I was really keen in the last ones. No damper, no center spring. I, I like. I was. I was just like, yeah, you must turn these off. You can turn them off, but you end up again with sort of this peak, peaks and troughs in the in the sort of feedback sensation that you're getting. It's kind of on or off, and we don't want that. We need to smooth these things out. Uh, if you have the wheel damper scale completely off and you're at a standstill, you can turn the wheel with ease. Like it will just turn, like as if the car's been, you know, been like it's hovering off the ground, no resistance at all. Completely unrealistic. So. I've cranked that wheel damper scale up to 28, a bit of a weird number, but 30 was too much and 25 wasn't enough. Um, but I, yeah, to get that right, I drove really, really, really slowly, like we're talking five, 10 miles an hour, and just moved the car from side to side, driving down the road really, really slow. You'll see what I mean. If you do that yourself, um, you'll notice that it's, you wanna try and get that feeling that power steering is is kind of where you expect it to be. Uh, it's a good it's a good one. Like power steering is like probably a, a nice way of looking at it. Um, so yeah, it's, fa it's fairly fairly. Uh, it's how light the wheel is. You know what I'm getting at. We've done this before. Uh, but anyway, 28 on that gave a, a nice realistic feeling for that um, sort of the weight of the wheel. Um, center spring is another thing that I used to think, no, 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 you just don't want that at all as well. Why would you? Why on earth would you want the wheel like trying to pull itself straight if you weren't moving? And um, yeah, while you don't want that, it, again, it just sort of helps to reduce wheel wobble by turning this up a little bit. So while the center spring scale is not making any um, sort of masking effects on the feedback that you're getting elsewhere, um, it's it's enough to just prevent a little bit of wheel wobble. Uh, wheel rotation angle is exactly um, sort of personal choice, isn't it? Really, whatever you want it on. Um, I quite like 720. It feels it feels good. Um, but if you're mixing your cars around and then you're you know you're jumping from a you know a, a Renault Clio into a Formula One car, you're going to want to change that wheel rotation angle because uh, it's just different for every car. Try and match, if you can, what the car reproduces in real life. You know, Formula One cars are down as low as, I don't know, maybe 400, 360, 420 degrees. Uh, real, real low somewhere around there, and then a general car day-to-day -day use rotates at 900 degrees. So it's you know, drastic changes there. Just, just try and match what's in the car. And steering linear, linearity, absolutely a no-brainer, smack in the middle, never should be anywhere else. Um, and that is it. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in. I think I was just really keen to get this, get this out there and get you guys some settings that were working really nice and giving, a good, uh, you know, giving good feedback. 
So there we go, you're interested in the figures from here down. Uh, those are the ones that are going to be the game changers. Uh, so yeah, there you go guys. Um, please give them a go. Let me know if you enjoy them. Um, give me some feedback if you want to uh, ask any questions about why I've set something here or whatever or what I believe uh, should be adjusted. If you've got, you've got some ideas that you want to throw at me, then yeah, please do. Uh, chuck them in the comments below. Please give the channel a like, subscribe, and all of that sort of stuff. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the new settings. Cheers, guys. Thanks very much, and we will see you soon. Goodbye.